Welcome dear students. In this lesson, I am going to give you an idea about the resultant force. As you already know, a force is a push or a pull. I will take this example to give you an idea about the resultant force. In order to move this car in a certain direction, a person has to apply the force in the same direction. Let's assume that the minimum force we should apply on the car in order to move is 300 Newton. And the one person can apply only 100 Newton. If one person trying to push this car, the force is not enough as the 100 Newton is less than the 300 Newton. Then another person join with him to push this car. Then the total force applied on the car is 200 Newton. But still the force is not enough to move the car. Then another person join with them. Then the total force applied on the car is 300 Newton. As I told you earlier, if the force is 300 Newton, then car start to move. Therefore, when three persons trying to push this car, it moves. In this example, the resultant force applied on the car is equal to sum of each and individual forces. The resultant force can be defined as a single force that gives the same result as that of all the contributing forces. This lesson has divided into three parts. Resultant of two collinear forces, resultant of two parallel forces, and the resultant of two inclined forces. Let's look at the resultant of two collinear forces. Let's take an example where a single force apply on an object. We can draw a force diagram by using a straight line and an arrowhead which indicate the direction of the force. This is the line of action of this force. And another force apply on the object in the opposite direction which the line of action is same. As you can see here, the lines of action are lies in the same line. This type of forces are known as collinear forces. Two collinear forces can be in opposite directions or in the same direction. In order to pull a fishing net, it needs a large force. Then a large group of people can take part and apply the force in the same direction along a same line. Because of the resultant force applying on the fishing net, it can be easily pulled towards the beach. Let's find how to calculate the resultant of two collinear forces acting along the same direction. As shown in this diagram, one Newton balance is attached in one direction and another two Newton balances attach in the other direction. Even these B and C balances are in opposite direction, the forces apply on the object are in the same direction. In this experiment, what we can do is, we apply two forces from Newton balances B and C. Then we can record the readings of B, C and also A. Once we got the readings, we can see that the sum of B and C is equal to A. If we get the readings of B as 10 Newton and C as 10 Newton, then we get the readings of A as 20 Newton. From this experiment, we can conclude that when two collinear forces act along the same direction, the resultant of two forces is equal to the sum of the two individual forces. And the direction of the resultant is same as the individual forces. Here I have given an example to calculate the resultant of two forces which act along the same direction and in the same line. These two forces are in the same direction. Therefore, we can get the answer by adding these two together. Then you will get 14 as the answer. 
This is another question from your exercise 9.1. To get the answer, we have to add 100 Newton and 200 Newton. Then we get 300 Newton as the resultant force. Then the direction of this resultant force is same as the 100 Newton and 200 Newton. Next question. A child is pushing an object placed on a table with a force of 5 Newton in a certain direction, while another is pulling it in a same direction with force of 7 Newton. What is the resultant of these two forces? We can do the same thing that we did in the first question. We can add 5 Newton with 7 Newton. Then the resultant force is 12 Newton. The direction of resultant force is same as 5 Newton and 7 Newton. Now let's move to our next topic, which is resultant of two collinear forces acting along the opposite direction. We can attach two Newton balancers into a trolley in the opposite directions. Then we can apply same forces from A and B. When we apply same forces from A and B, the trolley doesn't move. That is because the resultant force on the trolley should be zero. Then we can do the same experiment by applying a higher force on B than the A. If we do so, the trolley moves towards B. That is because the resultant of these two forces are in the direction of P. We can calculate the resultant force by subtracting A from B. From this experiment, we can conclude that when two collinear forces are exerted on an object in opposite directions, the resultant is given by their difference and the direction of the resultant is same as the direction of the larger force. Now you can force the video and do this example. To get the resultant force, we can subtract 2 from 5. Then we get 3 as the answer. Then the direction of the resultant force is towards 5 Newton. In this question, you can find the resultant force by subtracting 11 Newton from 15 Newton. Direction of the resultant force is same as the 15 Newton. Let's move to our next topic. Resultant of two parallel forces. On this object, you can see that there are two forces act along the same direction. Those two forces are parallel. When you draw the line of action, you can see it very clearly. In this diagram, you can see the forces are in opposite direction. Their line of actions are also parallel to each other. We can do this activity to find the resultant of two parallel forces. These A and B Newton balances are in the same direction and the C is opposite to A and B. Then you can apply separate forces on A Newton balance and B Newton balance. Once we apply forces from A and B, then you can see the sum of the A and B equal to C, which means to get the resultant of two parallel forces acting along the same direction, we have to add those two forces and the direction of the resultant force is same as the individual forces. You can force the video and do the exercise. You can see that these two forces are parallel each other and also in the same direction. Then we can get the resultant force by adding these two forces together. When we add 16 Newton into 8 Newton, we get the resultant force as 24 Newton. The direction of the resultant force is same as 8 Newton and 16 Newton. Here you have given the resultant force as 20 Newton. Then the individual forces are 12 Newton and X. Then the 20 Newton is equal to 12 Newton plus X. 
then we get 8 Newton as x. Our final topic in this lesson is the resultant of two inclined forces. According to this example, P and Q forces are inclined to one another. When we apply two forces in this way, the object doesn't move either of the direction of P or Q. Then the resultant of P and Q lies between the two forces.